So today we're going to talk about shading the sphere. And um, this is the video for week two, day one. It's um, our second week of classes. And because of the holiday, we just have one uh, lecture this week. So we have a charcoal uh, drawing at the top of our screen and we have a pencil drawing at the bottom. Most people are familiar with drawing with pencil. I'll put a link in the exercise uh, project sheet for this assignment so that you could watch this video if you um, want to see it again or if you missed it. Um, but the main things we're studying today are the six parts of light. We're going to have the highlight, the mid-tone, and right here five parts of lights are shown. I talk about six parts of light because I um, break up the mid-tone into a light mid-tone and a dark mid-tone, okay? Um, so this mid-tone, I break up into two sections. So I consider this like the light part of the mid-tone, and I consider this like the dark part of the mid-tone. And then, of course, the highlight is where, if you have a light bulb, it's illuminating that object, and that's the brightest part, usually the white of your paper. Then you have the core shadow. This is the core shadow. This is the darkest part of the shadow on the object. That's very important because that's what's gonna start showing the turning of the form and creating that three-dimensional look to your drawings. The core shadow or the darkest dark is never pushed to the edge of your object. Many beginners make that mistake. They make the darkest part right to the edge. You need room for reflected light. So when there's a light shining down on an object, the light misses the object, hits the table, and bounces back into the shadow side of the object. That's called the ambient light in the room. That ambient light illuminates the reflected light on the orb, okay? If you have a sphere at home, like um, any kind of ball, or if you have a styrofoam sphere, one of the hard styrofoam ones, like from Michaels or Joanne Fabrics, that's a great thing to use to practice uh, shading. And you can even put a colored piece of construction paper on the tabletop near that sphere. And the reflected light will actually turn the color of the paper. And that's how you know it's reflected light, okay? So if you had a red piece of paper and you laid it here, you'd have this dark cast shadow, but this reflected light would have a red glow. If you switched it to a blue piece of paper, this light would have a blue glow. It's a really cool experiment to try if you've never seen reflected light in action. Um, so that's very important. Part of today's exercise is to add this reflected light portion in. And then your cast shadow. So if light is illuminating your object here, it's going to create this cast shadow effect. That's the darkest dark. What's known as the crack is the darkest part of the cast shadow that's right under the object and then the shadow will dissipate as it moves away from the object. So this is just a nice little video that I wanted to show you. There will be a link in the project sheet. Um, so here's the project sheet I'm talking about that I've constructed for you. So here's a tiny sphere that's drawn, but you can see my method has always been, we're gonna learn to draw a sphere, a cylinder, a rectangular solid, and once we learn to shade those simple shapes, we're going to think of a human leg or a sculpture of a leg as a cylinder, and we're going to shade it in the same method. We're going to think of the ball of the fibula or the bone on the outside of the ankle as a sphere, and we're going to shade it as such so that we get that round form, okay? So this is just a nice uh, construction breaking down these complex forms into simple shapes, and then learning how to shade those simple shapes, like the knuckles as spherical objects. Okay, so that's our introduction picture. Drawing a sphere and then the layers project are our work for today. We're actually going to draw a sphere uh, together and you're gonna practice on your own. Then you're going to, in the second half of the class, draw a layers project and um, we're going to check in at two o'clock at the end of class today. So that's a new thing today. And we're gonna have a mini critique where we're going to look at our drawings and talk a little bit about them. 
I know that critiques can be uncomfortable and this will be our first critique as a class. Um, but if you'd like, you can email me an image of your work. Uh, but I think because they're spheres, it's a really a non-objective thing. We're just talking about creating this ball in space. So um, hopefully everyone will be confident to share their drawings, okay? Um, so you'll want to be taking a picture of your drawings or holding it up on your video screen. And the pictures you can um, upload to chat or email me and I'll share my screen and open them. So what we're going to do to warm up is we're going to draw a value scale with six parts of light. And then we're going to draw a sphere. When we're drawing the value scale, we'll do six boxes on our paper. The the one, number one box is the highlight, that'll be the white of your paper. The number six box is the darkest, that'll be the, um, the darkest dark you can produce with your charcoal or pencil. So our goals for today are to learn to shade a sphere with the six parts of light. So when you're shading a sphere in a perfect gradient, there's thousands of grays, okay? So that would be thousands of parts of light. But to understand how light works, we're going to simplify the light into those six different areas or categories. And we're going to try to really clarify those six areas, okay? Um, the second goal is we'll learn to separate the parts of light and create layers. So we'll do a layer project. Um, and th so these are the links here for the sphere. And then value and layer assignment, that's what you're going to be drawing later once you complete your sphere. Because the sphere will be a short, maybe 10, 15 minutes of your class time. So the value assignment is creating a layer drawing. Okay, so if you only have pencils and you don't have vine charcoal, I suggest using your H lead for the lightest, so like an H4 and H2 your B leads for your mid-tones to your darks, and for your cast shadows, if you have a B6 or an F, that's your darkest dark. So if you're using a set of pencils, this is the order. A hard lead, an H lead, will give you a lighter uh, look on your page. A B or an F will give you a darker, more smudgeable tone. Um, but we're going to be using charcoal if possible, if you have the kit, and then you don't have to worry about the different pencils. Um, so our warm up is to create a realistic gradient sphere in, giant, uh, in vine charcoal using a value scale. And our second assignment is the value layer assignment. Okay, so the value layer assignment is really cool. It looks like this. So I don't know, has any of you done just chat me up in the chat box. Have any of you done this layer assignment? It's kind of popular right now. Um, and um, I'm going to try to share my screen so we can do some drawing. So let me do that. I have to go back to share screen. And then I have to go to iPad or iPhone. And do that. Okay. I've already trusted this before, but I guess it's going to want me to trust it again. It's not prompting me though. Come on. Oh, hang on help if I plugged it in. Okay, here we are. So I need to turn my computer, my camera around. I'm sorry everything's in reverse. I, I'm not, I guess I should use the other camera. I can try that. Let me try that. Maybe I haven't problem solved this all. Nope. Well, actually, that did it, right? I believe. I believe that did it. Okay. Sorry, you're just learning as I learn. Ah, look, I did it. So proud of myself. 
Wow. Um, <laughs> this is our beautiful book, right? And if you did purchase the book and you have it, you already have this on page 91 and you can read more in depth about it, how to draw the sphere. Um, this is what I'm talking about, the value scale. This is a nine value scale. We're gonna do a six one for today. So um, let me just get rid of this. So let me, my screen share, just, just gonna make it look a little more sensical. There, okay. So we're going to be doing a value scale and we're gonna be creating the parts of light on the sphere. Each of the parts of light are marked in your book. Um, we just talked about these different parts of light. I will have this document uploaded to Blackboard so you can look at it. And not all lighting situations are the same, right? So in this case, this is called backlighting. Um, where the light is more behind the object and then the objects more in shadow. So light lighting does change. When we start with the sphere, it's nice because if we look at the moon each night, we can see when the moon is different phases, we see that core shadow change um, in shape. So that can, the phases of the moon can also be our um, reference for our um, our value scale. You can see my toothpick leg, sorry. Um, so here's uh, five rectangles, or we'll add one more, but really the last one is the white of the page. That's why it's not here. Um, and so just draw that on your page, um, you know, five or six, including the white of your paper rectangles on your page, and begin to shade as we talk. Um, creating the darkest to the lightest. Okay. I'm going to show you the shading that I did with the vine charcoal. So you're going to want something like this when you're done. So if you're able to use the vine charcoal, again, you want to use uh, the soft charcoal. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a stick of charcoal out of our paper. So I'll just demonstrate this quickly. So we'll take a stick of charcoal. They're usually very long. Uh, mine I've already broken, but you can easily break them in half. Do you see how easily I broke them? This is just a vine that's been burnt. So I can take this and I can sharpen it in my pencil sharpener and I will get all this beautiful dust that I can then use to tone my paper later. So save that dust. And um, what you can do is begin to, and you have to hold your charcoal different than a pencil. So those of you who are actually using the vine charcoal, you want to hold your charcoal with two fingers and your thumb so that when you're drawing, you can use your whole arm. Today we're drawing such small things on our lap, we won't really use our whole arm, but you'll have your dark vine charcoal there, then you blend it. As you blend it, do you see how much disappears? And it gets on your hands, it's very sooty. But as you layer, you'll create more depth in your value okay and so then you're just going to keep adding value and blending now i'm a sculptor so i blend with my fingers because i'm very hands-on so my drawing background is with um in combination with my sculpture many people do not like you to blend with your fingers in my class i feel like it's a wonderful tool um, because you have different size fingertips and you get this tactile sensation of really what you're doing. But if you prefer, you can use your blending stump and that blends just as well. 
And also, if your fingers are too large to get in an area, like the corner here, the blending stump is wonderful for creating those corners. So that's why you have some of these blending stumps in your, in your kit, okay? If you make a mistake, um, take the plastic off your kneaded eraser, and your kneaded eraser, you're gonna knead it like dough. You're going to warm it up in your hands and you're going to pull and fold over, okay? And then you can just erase as you need to. So we might not get as far today as I thought, but let's go ahead and try to draw our first sphere. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to black out this sphere, pretend like I'm just starting. And actually I'll just start for you guys. I'm gonna draw upside down though because I have to draw right side up for me. So I begin starting by making a circle. Don't draw your circle like this where you put it down and you just continue. Make it more of a sketch. You use the natural arc that you can create with your hand. You'll get a much more spherical circle that way. Okay? And then, once you have your circle, um, also, if you're holding your charcoal like a pencil, it's going to break, and the tip's going to break if you have too much pressure. So you're not really directly drawing. You're more just scraping that charcoal across the surface. Okay? So I'll try to draw upside down. This should be fun. So it's right side up for you. Okay, so that's gonna be my cast shadow, which means my highlight's gonna be somewhere in here because my light's coming from this direction. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my core shadow. So the core shadow is going to be thicker at the thickest part of the sphere and narrower at the bottom and the top of the sphere. And then I'm gonna blend it. And remember, my core shadow never goes to the edge because the darkest dark is never at the edge. This is gonna be the reflected light. So I can just blend a tiny bit here, but I'm gonna leave that reflected light open. This is a painterly way of drawing. And the reason I'm teaching you this method of drawing and using the charcoal is because it's much faster than pencil drawing. Look, I've almost got this full sphere rendered and I've just begun. It's already starting to look round, correct? So this is a really rapid way to draw. And I'm gonna bring us back to the goals of the class. The goals of the class are to complete portfolio styled still life drawings rendered in full value for transfer because we'll need 10 life drawings for transfer. So the reason we use this method is because it's the quickest method in a three hour class to get a completed fully rendered drawing on an 18 by 24 piece of paper. Um, then if I get a little charcoal where my highlight is, I'll take my kneaded eraser and I'll punch up that highlight. Um, I also like to draw in a unified way, which means I will drop a background tone behind my sphere because all these values are dependent on what's around them. So for the highlight area to look light and the half light to look like a half light, I have to have some kind of tone in the background. Otherwise, instead of a white sphere, it looks like a gray sphere if that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a tone in the background and you can either use your chamois or you can use your hands like I do because I'm a sculptor and I really like to get my hands in it and get dirty. So in my class, everyone has like charcoal on their face by the end of the class because they're like itching their nose and then their nose is like covered in, you know, uh, charcoal, but it's fun. So then I take the eraser and I just cut a nice clean edge, or I take the charcoal that's here and I cut an edge. You can also blow on your charcoal to get some of the dust away. And so here's my highlight. So this is a more painterly style. You can see it looks almost like um, it's painted instead of, instead of drawn like mechanically. But you can also see that there's a really nice range of full gradient of tone. So I've got my six parts of light here. And um, on the side, I'll just make my value scale if I haven't already, right, with my six uh, parts of light. This will be the white of the paper here. I'll start with my darkest dark. 
Um, but to do a value scale would normally take you probably 30 minutes or more. But to do a value scale in charcoal, very quick. I can almost do it in a minute here if, I, if I'm lucky and I get it just so. And I have a little bit extra left on my fingers to kind of make those lighter values. Bam, you know. I'm going to darken this one up. I'm going to make this one way dark. And so the, the way you get dark with the charcoal is to just add the layers and leave it alone or blend layer on top of layer. But it's a very fragile surface. If my hand touches this, oops, sorry. If my hand touches it, look how I remove so much of the layer. So you really have to get used to holding your hand up so that your hand's not brushing across the surface of the paper. Okay, so that's the tricky part with uh, charcoal. That's why it's actually better to draw on an easel. So if you have a little easel or a laptop or tabletop easel, that'll be better, or a drawing horse. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep adding tone till I get a nice value scale here. So draw your sphere, draw your value scale. Now, you're gonna show me that at 2.30, your sphere and your value scale, hopefully with charcoal, but if you don't have charcoal, you're gonna do it in pencil, okie dokie. Then, um, for the remainder of the class, you're going to follow this document, which I think I've already uploaded into Blackboard, but if not, I will. And you're going to watch this video on creating this layer assignment. So um, we have about two minutes left on Zoom together before we meet again at uh, two o'clock to 2.30. So I'm gonna show you the start of this assignment while you're drawing, because this is what I want you to draw today now, and then I will see you at two o'clock to see the results of your drawing. Call layers of value. First, let's review what value is. Value is the lightness or darkness of an image or part of an image. We're going to use just a basic pencil and create different levels of lightness and darkness with that pencil. First, let's practice. You'll create four shapes. The first one will be the lightest and will get darker from then on. As you're shading, press lightly on the first shape. You can press a little bit darker around the edges just for practice because this is how you'll be shading in your shapes in your exercise. So as we get to the third and then fourth shapes, we're going to press a little darker. You can see how I'm bringing my fingers down closer to the tip of the pencil when I want to create darker values. And when I was doing the lightest value, I held the pencil closer to the eraser. You can go back over some of your shapes if you need to add more layers of value as well. Okay, so do now that, that first. Practiced, we're going to create large... We'll continue watching this. I will post this project sheet on Blackboard right now and another Zoom meeting for two o'clock. I'll see you guys then. Happy drawing. Bye. <laughs>